because he's just been very ornery today, to put it lightly. But now he's going back to the fried penguin whole thing. He says, it's not my fault you were in here sounding like Mike and Mike this morning. I don't pay good money to listen to ESPN takes. Whatever, dude. (laughs) I'm not... I'm not going to even dignify that with a response. From KC, Vince dared Doug to give him a BPA and Doug stood down. I I did. I did stand down yesterday. I did. You know, because Vince is the guy that came up with the whole boil penis thing. But once, just like I told him yesterday, uh, you can all take heed to this. He gets one of those a year. Right, right. So, I mean, he called up here, and he kind of was, you know, lightweight talking kind of loud to me. But, I mean, Vince is my folk, ex-squad, so we gave him a pass on yesterday. But we won't do that too many more times. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm convinced Sidney Jackson is on crack. Sydney Jackson, Sydney Fried Penguin Jackson, very disrespectful, says, let me know when Oprah gets naked. That's who I'm waiting on. Yeah. 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 That confirms everything that I thought, that there was something wrong with Sydney Jackson today, that he was clearly delusional, and this confirms it. He's excited or can't wait till the time that Oprah Winfrey gets naked. Yep. I knew he was on crack. Yeah, I knew something was going on. <laughs> to quote my great-grandmother, he must be on drugs. <laughs> A lot of times, drugs are the answer. Well, well. Uh, Rel, the intern, Scott Keller Moore and Josh McCown gets deals. Recycle trash. Yeah, yeah. From, uh... Uh, Cornelia Small, Cap trying to get food to Somalia, and Agent Orange trying to claim right to ending his career. Why is our president trying to stop people from eating? It, exactly. That's a good way to look at it. You're very right. Um, Sydney, uh, resting games Jackson. <laughs> Wait a minute. In one post, you're Sydney resting games Jackson. The other post, you're Sydney fried penguin Jackson. Crack. Racist people love telling black people to leave the country when black people call out racist people for being racist. It's a strange thing for kidnappers to say. Uh, That's a very good point. It might be the most coherent thing that you've said today. From Eugene Jackson, Doug, how does McCown have a job before Kaepernick, RG3, and Cutler? You know what it is. But, But you know what? Just like I said, I'm trying to be, you know, um... I'm trying to, 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 to look at this in a positive outlook. Maybe this. Um, you know, for no reason. And that he's about to get shitted on. Um, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe he's taking his time. I'm trying to be positive about this thing. We'll see how long this drags on with Kaepernick not having a job. Uh, but clearly your point is, uh, is taken. From Wody Cancer Son, 504, Manuel wasn't doing that bad. Taylor just beat him out. Um, from Cedric Galloway, EJ has a job and a change of scenery might help him. Exactly. Uh, once again, I don't know if if he'll ever get the opportunity to start again. We've seen guys before uh, serve as backups. They get an opportunity to go in and start. And, um, you know, they do big things. So it's not like <laughs> – it's not like that his career is about to be over. E.J. Manuel probably got another 10, 12 years in the NFL. You know, he plays his cards right. So there was some talent in that guy, man, when he came out of Florida State for the Buffalo Bills to take him as high as he did. He was clearly a better option than everybody else uh, Everybody else that year that came out as far as the quarterback position. So I'm wishing the young man nothing but success. But as of right now, based on when he was drafting that, it's not a stretch to say that you could call him a bust right now. Right. Um, 
from ducking and dodging. I don't like using the term bust. It puts all the blame on the player and not the team or exec who drafted him. So that's a good point in relative terms. Buffalo's got a lot of issues. They've had a lot of issues with stupid-ass coaches like Rex Ryan. The front office usually does dumb things. Uh, some of their offensive players hadn't panned out. So, yeah, I don't want to put it all on him. Uh, but a lot of times when we call guys bust, you know, we're talking about that guy in particular. From KC, Mike Glennon must be a great pickup because he was drafted in the third round and is now a starter for another team. Yeah, doesn't add up. Doesn't add up at all. From Al Thompson, EJ is not a bust. He was a reach by Buffalo to be drafted in the middle of the first round. Yeah, I remember there was talk about the fact that I remember people were shocked that he went as high as he did uh, in the first round. So, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the point, too, as well. Maybe he should have never been picked in the first round, pick number 15 or whatever it was, 15 or 16, as I just talked about. That's a good point. When, uh, let's see, Al Thompson, I got to listen to the show from yesterday from Angry Black Man. Since you are using the same topic on the show today, can you tell us again when the Tyler Perry directed... <laughs> Why niggas always got to bring up old shit? Let's move on. From Mr. Harper, E.J. Manuel was a mid-round pick and a clear reach. From Thorny, get some, not going to even say that, street vernacular for penis. E.J. Manuel, so fine. Yes, let's talk about him a little bit more. From Mr. Harper, that being said, E.J. Manuel is a bust. <laughs> you stupid. You stupid. What did you just say? He just said a couple of posts earlier. E.J. Manuel was a reach. He was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, then following it up with, yeah, he's a bust. Oh, boy. Y'all hardcore. Y'all cold-blooded. Um... From uh, Chuchi, why is ABM smiling in his avatar? Um, Angry black man. I guess that's the acronym for angry black man. Let me see if I can go back and look at his avatar picture. Because you're right. That's that's totally uh, an oxymoron to his, his title. From um, Al Thompson, somebody getting some check marks by their name. <laughs> Who is that? Uh, who who deserves a check mark by their name? Sidney Jackson? I don't know. I'm done with Sidney Jackson today. He clearly hit the pipe too hard today. He's never this outspoken, especially for a ridiculous uh, side of the conversation. From Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast, Buffalo is an unstable organization. Different coaches, players, in and out, ownership change. Too many interchangeable parts to say consistent. The problem with that thinking and, and not putting some of the blame on E.J. Manuel is if that's the case, then we can recognize that. If I can recognize that, Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast can recognize that, you know, that Buffalo is an unstable organization, uh, then NFL teams would understand that. You would think that other NFL scouting departments and other GMs would understand that as well. EJ Manuel signed up to be a backup. There's 31 other teams in the NFL. A lot of these teams still need quarterbacks. Okay, and the fact that E.J. Manuel is okay, first of all, is okay with signing with the Oakland Raiders as a backup and not having, I guess, an offer to start says a lot. (laughs) And you're right. I can't think of him doing bad I just whenever I've seen him when he was early in his career and he got some early starts I don't remember him doing anything great I don't per se remember him throwing the ball to the other team 50 11 times like Tony Romo and Brett Favre anybody like that um or Ryan Fitzpatrick who throw four five interceptions like it's going out of style I don't remember that but I don't remember him doing anything like great where I said oh yeah this guy's a franchise type quarterback I don't remember that you know not great, not bad either, though. 
Um, but here's the thing about it. You've seen guys, this Glennon guy is a perfect example. Mike Glennon is going to start, <laughs> you know, in the NFL next year for the Chicago Bears. Um, it is the Bears, I believe, he signed with. Making like $9 million a year, and he's going to be the starter. You know? And, and maybe because uh, of, se- of several reasons. Uh, E.J. Emanuel's not getting that opportunity. But you would think if a team needs a quarterback, you know, E.J. Emanuel's available, and you got Mike Glennon available, that they would be looked at, you know, kind of like on the same plane. Uh, but E.J. Manuel's about to go be a backup, and Mike Glennon's going to make $9 million a year to start, and he ain't shit. <laughs> so maybe these NFL guys don't believe in E.J. Manuel, which may have something to do with him being a black quarterback and opportunities that you get. Some guys are career backups forever. They get opportunity after opportunity. Uh, you can't even really say that with E.J. Manuel. He's going to get an opportunity. He's getting a deal. He's getting a job just as a backup. That's all. All right, when we get back from the break, man, we'll read chat, man, the entire last segment of the show. How about that? Oh, we got to mention one thing, though. Yeah, we got to talk about Myron Roll, man. You talk about good stuff in sports. We always talk about the negative. How about a real positive story? Up next on the Doug Tour Show. Don't go away. Money, then nigga, let's get it. You 
saying something about honey, the nigga, I'm trying to hit it. They used to call me Dread, I cut my hair like exhibit. Now I'm just tree, bagging shorties with ease. Hit the mall, time to ball, I'ma blow a little cheese. Rolling with my G's, and we wish a nigga would. Want some choppers, blocker, blocker, heavy mirrors in your hood. Cause I'm swerving my suburban, swerving in my suburban. The choppers, blocker, blocker, the choppers gon' try and knock us when I'm swerving my suburban.